filled out already, just got to go and uh, do it, amen, I praise God for that, amen, uh, praise God, amen, you can be seated for a minute, amen, I just want to give God some glory in this place, I thank God, amen, for the opportunity and the privilege this evening to be able to share the word of God, and to glorify his name, amen. Praise God. You know, well, this year has been, it's been, uh, it's, it's been uh, ups and downs, you know, I mean, we've had victories, we've had disappointments throughout the year. If you look back uh, where you're at now and you look back and see where God has brought you from or brought you through, whatever the case might be, you know, it's, it's, it's a time to praise the Lord, Amen. Because I don't know about you, but last at the beginning of this year, I went through a lot of stuff. Can you say amen? And I thank God as I look back that I didn't falter or fall. You know what I mean? When the hard times came, I was able to stand. Can you say amen? And through the victories, amen, there were a lot of trials. Uh, or should I say, through the trials, there were a lot of victories, amen? But I believe that, that the greater the call, the greater the trials. But also the greater the victories. Can you say amen? Come on, somebody. Uh, you know, and as we look back on this year, we can see how God has moved in individual lives and how he's moved in your family or whatever, in your work. He might have promoted you in a job or something. But I believe now as we come to the close of this year, I believe now it's time to close the door on this year. Can you say amen? amen. If you have your Bibles with you today, I ask that you turn with me to the book of uh, to Philippians chapter 3. Can you stand to your feet as we begin to read the Word of God, please? Philippians chapter 3, and I've entitled this message tonight, Close the Door, Open the Door. Look at your neighbor and say, Close the Door. Close the door. Now look at your neighbor and say, Open the Door. Open the door. Sounds kind of confusing, huh? But we need to close the door on this year, amen, and open the door to what God has for us in this new year. Philippians chapter 3 starting at verse 13. When you get there, say, Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Word of God reads, Brethren, or brothers and sisters, I count not myself to apprehend it, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me. Come on, say behind me. Behind. Forgetting those things which are behind me, and reaching forth to those things which are before me. Help me pray. Heavenly Father, in the name that is above all names, Jesus of Nazareth, Lord, we give you glory. We honor you and we praise you in this place tonight, Father. Father, we thank you that you've given us this opportunity to come and assemble here under the bloodstained banner of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you would have your way, that you would have liberty tonight, that you speak to, to us, Lord, through your Holy Spirit. As I decrease and your spirit increases, Lord, use me as a vessel, Father. Speak to your people, Father. Give vision, give life, Father, in this place as we glorify you in Jesus' name. And everyone in agreement says, amen, amen and amen. Hallelujah. You see, Paul compared his life in Christ as that of one in a race. Can you say amen? And his attitude was, the, uh, was one that expected to win. Can you say amen? Come on, somebody. I don't know, but Paul always said that he fought a good fight, amen? That he completed the race, amen? But you see, his focus was to obtain the prize. 
And he knew that any distractions would cause him to become disqualified. So he didn't take the chance to look behind him. He didn't take the chance on looking who was who didn't make it or his disappointments or his failures. He didn't take that chance. What he said is he forgot those things that were behind him, but he looked forward, amen. He pressed forward to the things that were in front of him. You see, he didn't stop to think of all the trials and all the difficulties he's had or had he had encountered. Paul had a sense of one that closed the door on his past. Can you say amen? And this year is coming to a close for you and I. And you and I should close the door on this past year and open the door to what God has to do for us in this upcoming year. Can you say amen? You see, our text emphasizes forgetting the past. And we should safely, or we can safely approach this portion of Scripture as one closing the door on all things that we have suffered in this past year. Can you say amen? You see, we need to begin to forgive those who have wronged us and leaving behind the things that God has done. Yes, leave behind the things that God has done, and now we look for the new things that He's going to do in this new year. Can you say amen? Come on, somebody. Somebody needs to help me preach in this place. You see, some of us might have started off good or not too good in the beginning of this year. You know, maybe there were some high hurdles that you and I, or some obstacles that you and I needed to overcome. We might have even lost some loved ones and we were paralyzed by that. And it could have even caused us to drop out of the race. But it's not how you started the race that matters. It's how you finished the race that counts. Can you say amen? Somebody give the Lord some praise. You see, you and I must close the door on this past year. Say close the door. Close the door. Come on, say close the door. You see, you and I could have even had some great accomplishments this past year, amen? This could have been the best year that you and I had in our walk with God. But let me tell you something. If you close the door to this past year, I believe that God will open the door to even greater things in this upcoming year. Come on, somebody. You see, Samson was a man, amen? He was called by God, and he did some great exploits in his time. And even though he was disobedient, he was still able to defeat and to, to, to defeat a lot of Philistines. Can you say amen? Come on, somebody. But his downfall, turn with me to the book of Judges chapter 16. I believe we see Samson's downfall in Judges chapter 16. You see, the Bible says there that he had an encounter with this woman named Delilah. Amen. And Delilah is the representation of sin. And because of uh, Samson's continual disobedience, he believed that what he had happened to him in the past, he was able to do it in the future or at his present time. In chapter 16, verse 20, the word says, And she said, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. And when he awoke out of his street, his sleep, he says, I will go out at other times before, and I will shake myself free. But he had forgot or he did not know that the Lord had departed from him. You see, Samson relied on the street he had from the past. Come on, somebody. He thought that he could go out just like at other times. You see, he thought he was able to defeat his challenges because of yesterday's strength. He got comfortable and caught up in the victories of his past, and it caused him great defeat. Come on, somebody. You see, we can get caught up in what God has done in the past year, amen? We can get stuck there and we won't be able to move forward to what God has in this new year. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Don't get caught up in what God did for you in this past year. You and I need to focus and get ready for what he's getting ready to do in this upcoming year. Somebody say praise the Lord. Come on, somebody. Look at your neighbor and say, close that door. Come on, close that door. Hallelujah. God might have done some great things for you and I. Amen. He could have kept us from some tragedies. Amen. Saved our lives when we know we should have been dead. We might have even got promoted on a job. Can you say amen? Those were some great things. Amen. He could have delivered us. Amen. From oppression and depression. And glory be to God for that. But it's time to close the door. 
of the past year. You see, there might have been some stuff going on in your life, or there might be some stuff still today. You need to close the door on those secret things. Come on, somebody. You need to close the door on those secret things, those things that you think that nobody knows about. And per people probably don't know about them. But the eyes of the Lord are in all places. Can you say amen? Psalms chapter 19, 12 says, How can or who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Those little pet peeve sins that you and I might have. Amen. We need to close the door on them. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 says that we need to lay aside every weight and every sin that so easily besets us. Amen. And we need to run. Come on, somebody say run. Run with patience the race that is set before us. Sometimes you and I or some of us need to close the door on the attitudes we had. Amen. The attitude of complacency. The attitude of compromise and hypocrisy. Come on, somebody. Close the door on our own understanding. Well, I think it should be done this way, Pastor. I think it should be done this way. We need to close the door on our own understanding. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 says, To trust the Lord, amen, with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. Close the door. We did a lot of things maybe in our own way. But let this new year be a year where you and I seek the Lord and we inquire of God before we do anything. Can you say amen? amen. Look at your neighbor again and tell him, Cierra la puerta. Close the door. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, once we close the door on the past, we will be ready. And that's the only time you got to close the door in order to get ready for God to open the door. Can you say amen? You see, once we close the door on the past, then we are ready for God to open the door on the new things that he's getting ready to do. You and I need to set some goals for this new year. Can you say amen? You see, Paul was a goal setter. When he said he looked forward to the prize, he was setting the goal. Can you say amen? You know, some of us walked in this year and we didn't know what we were going to do. We just walked in this year. Amen. We weren't seeking God for anything. We just were walking in this world, walking in this year. But you and I need to set some goals. You and I need to commit more to church involvement and evangelism. Can you say amen? amen. In this new year, you and I need to make ourselves available. Can you say amen? amen? The more time you spend with God, it keeps us aware of our condition. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hello. Amen. Somebody help me. Amen. You see, Paul said that he forgot those things of the past. And he looked forward to the things, the new things. He had his eyes fixed on what was ahead of him. He was a goal setter. You see, Paul was moving towards his goal. And his goal was to know Jesus better so that he would be able to be an effective witness and of the power of our risen Savior. Can you say amen? You see, you and I should set that goal where we come to a place in our walk where we desire to know Christ better. Can you say amen? amen? You know, it's time to get out of our complacent attitude and begin to seek the things of God. You see, Pastor preached a message this morning, seek ye the first, the kingdom of God. Amen? A lot of us want to seek our own things. Amen? We want to walk in our own righteousness. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hello now. Amen. It's getting quiet in this place. Amen. If you're going to throw anything at me, make it be tomatoes because I need them. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord some praise in here. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Say, open the door. Come on, we closed the door. Now it's time to open the door. Can you say amen? First of all, you and I have to be goal centers. And, you know, God doesn't expect you to make some long goals that you know you're not going to be able to accomplish. Amen? Our expectation should be short. So we need to make some sh short-term goals that would help you get to meet those long-term goals. In other words, if you have a vision of getting somewhere, maybe we need to take some baby steps first. Can you say amen? 
Come on, somebody. Maybe we need to take some baby steps first. People want to get saved and they want to come up here and preach. But there's a price you got to pay to get up here. Come on, somebody. They don't see all the trials that we go through. Make some short-term goals. How about coming to prayer? How about picking up your Bible and reading it sometimes? Come on. You see, when you make those short-term goals, then sooner or later you'll be able to accomplish and get to that long-term goal. You see, but before we are even able to accomplish any goal in our life, you and I have to commit to that goal. Come on. You see, we can make resolutions and we can set goals, but there are only going to be goals until you commit yourself to it. Come on, somebody. I see this church growing right now. I see the people in this place. Now it's time to commit. Come on, somebody. Commit. Don't just come to church. Don't just come to hear the word. But come to hear the word, apply it to your life, and commit to what God is telling you to do. I believe God is going to do some great things through this English ministry. Come on, somebody. How many of you believe that? If you raise your hand, God's seen that, and that means that you need to commit yourself. Amen? You see? Commitment means sacrifice. So when you say you're going to commit, be ready to sacrifice. No more days of your lives. Come on. No more novelas. Capulina or whatever you guys want. Okay? We need to commit. Can you say amen? The devil's real, amen, and he's not playing around. He's taking Christians out left and right. The Bible says in the end times there's going to be a great falling away. I don't want to fall away. Amen. Come on now. I want to stand fast. Amen. Amen. Some of us need to grab a hold of Jesus like a pit bull on a pork chop. Amen. Come on. Amen. You see, once we set those goals and commit to those goals, we become faithful in the things that God has placed in our hand. And you see, God uses those that are faithful. Can you say amen? He says if you're faithful in a little bit, he will give you more. Come on, somebody. Some of us got to stop putting in a dollar and maybe try five dollars in the offering. Come on, purpose within your heart to give to the Lord. Help me, somebody. I'm getting quiet in here. Is this bulletproof, Pastor? Hallelujah. You see, you and I need to try to set some goals that cha and challenges that you that commit you to God and the things of God. Right? We need to set some goals. You and I need to become faithful in our attendance and our service. Uh oh. You mean I have to be in church at every Bible study, every message, every yeah? Why not? Huh? Somebody said there was a party down the street. You be there. Huh? We made every party, right? Come on. I don't know about you, amen, but I used to put on my calendar just the days of the parties and have my clothes ironed and lined up ready for that day already. <laughs> put on that follow me stuff. <laughs> you and I need to set some goals. We need to become faithful. Purpose in your heart to be consistent in your tithing and your giving. Amen. amen? amen. The advancement of the kingdom of God is more than just physical labor. We need money to do this. Can you say amen? amen. It's not for the pastors new Mercedes. Come on. We're trying to reach souls. Amen. amen. You guys still love me? Amen. 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 Regardless how you feel about me, I still love you guys. Amen. Amen. You see, you you here. This English ministry is getting ready to take off. You see, maybe you need to learn how to play an instrument. Come on. Maybe you need to learn how to greet somebody at the door. Work with the children. You see, God has opened the door of opportunity to the, be, to the faithful to be used in this place. Did you hear what I said? He opened the door of opportunity to anybody. So you didn't hear what I said. 
I said he opened the door of opportunity to the faithful to be used in this place. Not just anybody. We have to become faithful in our hearts. We have to become faithful in our walk. We have to become faithful in our relationship with God. In the time we spend to go with God. Amen? I believe that we need to open up this church. Uh, I'm not trying to tell you what to do, Pastor, but I think that we need to, before each service, at least a half an hour of prayer where the leaders will come and pray Amen. before service starts. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. One thing I appreciate about this church is the praying church. Amen. It's a church that there, we're always interceding for people. Amen. Doing battle in the spiritual realm. Some of us need to set boundaries in our lives, amen? We need to realign our priorities. This new year is going to be a new year of challenges. New people are going to come in this church. I've been praying that God will send the people that the other church has rejected. So we need to pray for ourselves. We need to get ourselves ready for the influx of people. I believe in the end time move, amen. I believe in the end time revival when those that don't know God or never know God will be coming into churches. And you and I need to be ready for that. Come on, somebody. You see, the Lord is coming back soon, brothers and sisters. It's no time to play church. It's no time to play church. Revelation says he'll spit you out of his mouth if you look more. It means it's time to get on fire for the Lord, amen? Because the devil ain't playing. You see, if you're here in this place, you need to earnestly seek God for the purpose in this ministry and move toward that purpose. He didn't place you in here just to warm the bench. Each and every one of us have a gift. That edifies this place. That edifies the body. That encourages and equips other members in this place. Earnestly seek God for your purpose in this ministry and move forward. Find out what the vision of this ministry is. And pray over it so that you can, it would become a part of you. Some people sitting in this church and don't even know what this church is all about. Find out what the vision is. Habakkuk says, write the vision on the wall so that he who reads it will catch it and run with it. You can't do anything for God unless you have a vision. Because then you start to move towards that vision. Find out what it is. You need to desire a more intimate relationship with God through your prayer and reading of the Word. Some of us only come to church and read the Word. When the pastor opens his Bible, blow some of that dust off that Bible and start reading it. Then when you read the Word of God, that's where you find your purpose. When you read the Word of God, it's where you find out who God is and what He expects from you and I. Fellowship with God, with God by spending time in His Word. You see, God has required a lot from you and I. Hello, somebody. Amazing. He requires a lot. It's not easy to present yourself a living sacrifice. That's a lot. Because the nature of man wants to do his own thing. Can you say amen? You see? But you and I need to purpose ourselves for the kingdom of God. We got to catch the vision of this church. It's an evangelistic ministry. Mission trips. I'm getting ready to go to El Salvador and everywhere else the Lord want to take me. Can you say amen? Come on. Amen. I think the furthest I've ever been out of California was in Utah. Mormon City. Salt Lake. I was there for six months. Man, I'll never go back there again. <laughs> the Lord really has to send me on a mission trip, and I go back there, amen? But you and I need to purpose in our heart that we will become faithful to the things of God. Catch the vision of this church so that you will be able to move for it. 
You see, when we all move in unison, things begin to happen. Can you say amen? Look at your neighbor and say, open the door. Hallelujah. You see, our purpose is in the Word of God. If you don't know why you're sitting here, or you don't even know, there's some, there might be some people here that don't even know why they come to church. Read the Word. I'm getting ready to close. You and I need to open the door of fellowship this year with Jesus. Not the two-minute flare prayers, they call them, but spend some quality time with the Lord. Starting December the 25th, I'm going to take a week-long sabbatical. That means you ain't going to be able to get a hold of me, nobody. I'm going to spend some time with God, some quality time that I need with the Lord. And I encourage you to spend some time and to seek God so that you can move in the direction that God has you to move in. You see, because when you begin to move in the direction that God has you to move in, you receive the favor and the blessings of God upon your life. The trials become a lot easier. Can you say amen? Because the peace of God is there. Because the word tells us that perfect peace is to him whose mind is stayed upon the Lord. Come on, somebody. Fellowship with God. And as I close, I just want to say this. When we close the door to this past year and open the door for God to do greater things in this new year, we will find many new challenges and opportunities to advance the kingdom through this ministry. So let you and I be like Paul. Set goals and move toward them. Can you say amen? amen. Every head bowed and every eye closed. I'm done. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is a good God. Can you say amen? amen? He is real. But he's only as real as you make him. Hallelujah. I don't know where you're at. But I believe that the Lord is calling us to commitment. Can you say amen? He's calling us to forget about those things from the past year. Even your birthday. <laughs> Amen. I want to forget every birthday I got now. Amen. I'm getting to that age. But God is calling us to commit. But we can only commit when we begin to close the door on the things of this closing year. There's nothing that you and I can do to go back and change that. But what we can do is that we can have fellowship with God, catch the vision, and move in the direction in which God has us to move in. Can you say amen? amen? There's many people out there that need Jesus. There's many people out there that are lost and looking for an answer. When you and I sit in a place under the Word of God, you and I have that answer. It's time to commit. The Lord has opened some doors for opportunity in this place. We should count it a privilege that he's called us to a new work here in this place. If you're here today, first of all, if you don't know Jesus, and it looks like everybody here does, but if you don't know Jesus, today is your day of opportunity. Jesus died on the cross over 2,000 years ago for you and I. A plan was set before the foundations of the world to make a way for mankind to come in a relationship with the creator of the heavens and the earth. And that was accomplished on a hill called Calvary. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, if you're not sure that if you were to die right now, where you spend eternity. Jesus is here. If you don't know Jesus, I want to ask you, if you want to receive eternal life, the Word of God says that all those that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if you're here today and you don't know Jesus and you want to receive him as your Lord and Savior, I want you to raise your hand all over this place right now. 
Hallelujah. Quickly, quickly, if you don't know Jesus, we see that hand. We see that hand. If you don't know Jesus, just break your hand. Hallelujah. Great. Well, I guess we're all saved here. Commitment. If you're here today, I'm not going to make some past the altar call to commit. But if you're here today and the word of God that was spoken today dealt with you, this altar is open right now. God would want to pray with you. If you want to commit to this place, if you want to commit to the things of God, we want to pray with you. Hallelujah. The altar's open. All in this place. Thank you. 
Thank you.